Now, what I want to share is the method I use to measure the heat pump's power and efficiency. This might help you decide if a portable heat pump can heat your house. The hardest part of measuring heat pump power is measuring the airflow. Once we know this, we can use the specific heat capacity equation to work out the power, which is that without the CP term in there. Um, you probably used this equation at school for measuring the, the heat of a candle gives off to a beaker of water. And we are doing the same here, but with a flow of air and a flow of energy, which is called a power. Uh, the trick I use to find the airflow is I've built my own mass airflow sensor, which is basically a uh, heating element in a in the duct. It's not electrically safe, so don't try this at home. It uses the fan from the heat pump in fan only mode. I have to make sure I always have airflow when I run the heater. Using this method, I can find the airflow using a power meter and two thermometers. That one and that one. And so the heater or heat pump, whichever one I'm running, is in between the two thermometers. Okay. So then you just run the equation backwards to find M, the airflow. Um, Q is the power meter reading, which is from there, and delta T is the difference between the two thermometers. You have to wait five minutes for the reading to get steady state. So let's do that now. So let's put that on. And that needs to be in fan mode. Heater on. And you'll see it's drawing a kilowatt. So it's now a fan heater. And we just wait for the temperature reading to stabilize. So we give it five minutes and come back. So five minutes has passed and it seems to have uh, stabilized now. And it's, so we've got 27 degrees coming out, 18 and a half degrees going in. And power consumption is uh, just over a kilowatt. So calculator's out now. The airflow is 145. I think the units are grams per second on that, but I'm not, I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter because we don't we don't use the units because we just reverse it, the equation again. So now we turn on the heat pump uh, to to heat pump mode, and then we have to wait for five minutes again for the uh, steady state to happen so I'll pause it now. So it's leveled out now at uh, about 31.3 on the outlet and 18 on the inlet and the power is half a kilowatt. So you can already see that it's using half the energy of the fan heater and making more heat with the same airflow. And that's where the free energy is coming from. So here are the numbers. That's the result for the heater, the resistance heater, where we got the uh, the mass flow rate of 145. And then with the equation, uh, just plug that into there, times the heat pump delta T was 13. So that times that gives you that. Uh, and that is the power output of the heat pump. So then to get the, the COP, you have to divide that by the electrical consumption. And then the result is 3.4, which is pretty good.
Now I've done this a few times and um, the, the result that's immediately apparent to me is that the more airflow you can get through your heat pump then the higher efficiency, the higher coefficient of performance you're going to get. And when I just had one duct coming out the back of it, it choked the flow a bit and um, we didn't get very good efficiency, we're only down here. And so I put, I put two ducts on it, going to different rooms, and then the efficiency jumped up to about three. Hiya! Hello! So this means we're getting three times the power of a resistance heater or a fan heater. Interesting to compare our results to the manufacturer's specifications because we got 0 0.53 for the power draw and we got 3.4 for the coefficient of performance uh, and that's better than what they've said. Um, but the power output we got less because they just multiply these two together. Um, but they haven't included uh, the defrost cycle and the, because 70% of the time the unit is working but 30% of the time it's defrosting. So if you multiply that by 0 0.7, uh, that times that times 0 0.7 gives you one uh, 1.26 kilowatts. So that's uh, just over half of what they say. So if you're buying this thing to heat your house, then you, you need to realize that the, the real heat output is going to be between the electrical drawer and what they advertise as the heat output. So somewhere between the two. Uh, and it's best not to base your number on this, otherwise you can have a cold house. <laughs>